three, two, one, and vote. Oh, That's so really sad. Do you want to show them? Why? Yeah. Show them. Oh, you may oh. <laughs> Who is a monkey? Today, I want to share the best game I've ever played in class. Who is a monkey? Each character gets a unique animal. That animal has an ability. After all the students have acted out their abilities and the cards have switched up, now they have to discuss and find out who are the monkeys. In today's video, I will explain how the game works. I will explain all the animals and their abilities. And at the end, I will show you a real game being played. How does it work? You can use five to 10 players. Discard extra cards depending on how many players there are. I've also played this with 20 students in my class where I am the GM, the game master, which hosts the game and moves everything around and another student for a different group. Tell the students that as the GM, you will move things around they can just point and you will do it. Before you start, write down all the animals and their abilities on the board so that students can check what the animals are and what abilities they have. Information is very important in this game. After all the students have checked what animals they are, they go to sleep and you as the GM will call them out one by one to do an action. Now I will explain the abilities. The first one, monkey. There are two monkeys. The other animals want to find out who the monkeys are. So you have to lie. So I say all the monkeys wake up and the monkeys wake up. If there are two monkeys, they see each other and they have to help each other. If there is only one monkey, it means that the other monkey is in the three cards that are face down. So that monkey goes to sleep. Um, these are fun, so they have to lie and think of a way to get students to pick someone else. I say monkeys go to sleep, hyena wake up. The hyena wakes up and then I say monkeys raise your hands. Without waking up, the monkeys raise their hands. The hyena's uh, job is to help the monkeys. So if during the day phase, someone says to someone, you're a monkey, the hyena should try and take the blame or try and to get someone else to be picked. So they are almost like a minion to the monkeys, but the monkeys don't know who the hyena is. At the end of the game, the students have to vote. If they vote for a monkey, the rest of the animals win. But if they vote for one of the other animals, the monkeys and the hyena wins. So if the other animals pick the hyena, then the hyena and the monkeys win. If one of the monkeys gets picked, then the hyena and the monkeys lose. The most powerful of the other animals is called the owl. The owl has the ability to see two cards in the middle. So there are three cards in the middle face down. The owl can look at two of them. This gives the owl a lot of information and power because if one of the monkeys lies and says they're one of the cards in the middle that the owl has seen, the owl can say, you are lying. Okay, so the owl is a very powerful card. It gives them uh, extra information. They can also say, oh, I saw one monkey in the middle. That means that there is only one monkey among us. The next animals are the elephants. There are two elephant cards. Now these are almost like the policemen. I say elephants wake up and the elephants look at each other. They are not supposed to lie. They are innocent. So they, it's their job to try and find the monkeys and the other animals can know that because these two can see each other, they probably won't lie. It's maybe a bit boring, but it's uh, very useful. If there is only one elephant that wakes up, that means that the other elephant is in the middle. The next animal is the zebra. The zebra changes cards with another player. 
This is really fun because if you pick another animal like an elephant and you change and you see now you are an elephant and you can say, listen guys, I'm innocent. Uh, he is innocent. I am actually the elephant now. I used to be the zebra. But when the zebra changes, they have the ability to see which card they become. If they become a monkey, now they are secretly a monkey. The other player thinks, oh, I'm a monkey, I have to lie. But now the zebra knows that was the monkey, now I'm the monkey. Okay, so that's really fun. The uh, zebra is a fun card to play. The next card is the fox. The fox switches two other players' cards. They can switch their own. Also, they cannot see what those cards are. So they switch two other people's cards and it's really fun. And that information is also important because if you switch two players, they can say, oh, I was an elephant. What were, what were you? And then they can say, oh, I was a monkey, but now you're the monkey and everybody votes for that person. It's really fun. It might sound very confusing. This game is amazing once the students get used to what the animals do and in what order they actually do the actions. The next animal is the panda. The panda switches their card to one of the three cards in the middle, but they cannot see what they have become. So perhaps the owl has seen which card they become, but otherwise we have no idea what they are. Uh, if they say they are a panda, it's actually quite dangerous because you don't know what that is. The next card is a little bit boring. It's the rabbit. So basically at the end of the night phase, the rabbit is the last one to act. The rabbit checks their card to see if it has changed. So at the end of the night, you say, rabbit, wake up, rabbit, check your card. Maybe it remains the rabbit, otherwise someone switched it and then they are that new card. One of the questions you might have is, Eric, if it switches, are they still their original animal? No, at the end of the night phase, it's whatever card is in front of them. This is the most fun card because you want to get picked. You're not a monkey, you're not a hyena, uh, you're not one of the animals, you want to be picked. If you get picked, everybody else loses. If anybody else gets picked, then you lose. So you want to be picked. You want to say, hey, I'm a monkey, or you want them to not believe you and pick you so that if once you show this, you win. This is also a warning for other animals because they know if they pick the wrong person, they might lose. So they have to avoid picking the parrot. The tiger is a special card that doesn't move during the night phase. However, once the day phase is complete and the students have decided who they want to vote for, if they pick the tiger, whoever the tiger is pointing at is also picked. And if they point to a monkey, then the animals still win. Yeah. Okay, let's see. You can open up your card. No, uh, yeah, is it that one? Yeah. Tiger! Oh! Okay, Tiger, who are you voting for? Whoever. You. Let's see. Oh, uh, Monkey! Monkey. Yeah! Now, once the night phase is over, you tell all the students to wake up and then they have to have a discussion. What animal were you? What card were you? What did you see? What did you move? And you, they also look at the order. They try and figure out who was what animal. Once they are ready to pick, you say three, two, one, everybody points and they can't move their hands. Sometimes the students pick one and then they go to someone else. You say, listen, you can only point to one person. Don't move your hand. So you count three, two, one, everybody votes and then you reveal the card. If it's a monkey, the other animals win. If it's a hyena or one of the other animals, the monkeys and the hyena wins. If it's the parrot, everybody else loses. If you want this PDF with these cards, you can check out the website. I put it in the description below.